Hi guys, good morning. Good morning to all. So I hope you all can hear me. I think we all to this webinar on DC circuit. So it will be in one day training. We'll start in like five or ten minutes as the participants still getting in. Guys, I'm yet to start. Yet to start the book. It will tell you uh, the introduction about the synergetics. It's just these slides which I am just like sharing with you. We are waiting for more five minutes as the participants are still getting in. So please note, we'll start by ten ten.
starting to work. I hope my screen. सर्टिफिकेशन certification plus add on solution cloud adoption solution architecting solution practice playbook solution let us take technology training solution and then we have emerging technology training solution so these all are the master solution which we offer then today's session is organized by atc community that is azure tech community and sponsored by synergetics and microsoft our atc community is open to all who all are interested in cloud technologies you just need to follow our meetup groups uh, so we have different kind of uh, meetup groups so if you are interested to get the relevant uh, updates regarding the uh, certification we do training we do you just have to follow this uh, meetup groups so we have emerging technology community for all then we have azure tech community pune particularly for pune community then we have emerging technology community for surat and azure tech community nagpur for nagpur guys so you just need to install the meetup app on your phone or whatever device you uh, like get in and follow our communities so you'll get the updates on the upcoming events we will be doing then the small code of conduct please note uh, that you are not allowed to take the screenshot of the presentation and cannot do the screen recording so we'll share this recording on our official youtube channel so just subscribe to our youtube channel the official youtube channel link will be provided to you all in the chat box later on then today's speaker for this webinar is mr smit shah he is an mct and currently working as an data science training consultant then we have session agenda as you can see we'll get an overview on dp 100 certification and more then we are providing an exam voucher at 35% discounted rate that is for 3200 for this certification like dp 100 also note once you purchase, purchase this exam voucher from us you will get certified in particular courses you will get this microsoft certified batch the titles will be microsoft certified associate the microsoft certified uh, fundamental ya microsoft certified expert so we'll get you will get these batch and also once you fail the exam at like first attempt you fail it no worries we'll give you the sec uh, second attempt chance for to attempt the exam for particular course or you can say certification then we are providing the learning achievement batch for dp 100 these are the steps to get activated your learning achievement batch you just have to follow the steps to get the batch activated so i will drop this learning achievement batch steps in the you know chat box and you can just follow it and get your learning batch activated 
as you all know synergetics provide uh, different kind of training so you all can grow professionally with us we provide fundamental as well as the advanced role based training here you can see the different fundamental courses and advanced role based courses which we provide trainings on so if you are interested in getting uh, certified in any of these courses you can connect with us i will drop the details in the chat box then we have next uh, certification webinar on pl100 again it will be one day free session on 20th of jan the registration link will be provided to you all in the chat box so you can register through that then do follow us on our social media platform to get the uh, relevant information or what we say updates regarding the webinar workshop certification trainings we do and also it's a humble request to each and every participant to just fill out the feedback form by the end of the session as we will share the feedback form link in the chat box so you just have to fill out the feedback form and let uh, let us know your views on the session now i like to hand over the mic to smith so he can take ahead the session thank you thanks to all all right thank you chaitali so let's move ahead uh, before moving ahead, guys, just ping me in the chat whether you can hear me clearly. So, Rajiv, Kanan, any of you just ping me in the chat. Is my voice perfectly fine? Good to go. Okay, I'm assuming that my voice is fine. Okay, yes, clear. Okay, fine. Thank you, Prashant. So, fine. So, let's go ahead. Before going, I just want to give a brief intro about myself. My name is Smith Shah, and I will be your mentor for this entire webinar. So I'm a Microsoft certified trainer and I've been working as a data science trainer since the past four years. OK, so that's a, just a brief introduction about me. Now let's go ahead and let's talk about the agenda for this webinar. So as you guys know, today we'll be learning about. DP 9, uh, sorry, DP 100 certification. OK, so today we'll be learning about some basics of DP 100 certification. OK. Now, there are three types of certification that Microsoft offers. First is your fundamental level certification. Second is your associate level certification. And third is expert level certification. So DP100 is a associate level certification and it has a validity of one year. OK, I repeat it has a validity of one year. I will mention it that it is valid up to one year period. OK. Your fundamental certifications are valid up to lifetime, whereas associate level certifications in Microsoft are valid up to one year period. OK, and just to talk about how the exam will be conducted, all of the questions in the DP 100 certification will be MCQ questions only. OK, so all of them will, will be MCQs and you will have around 37 to 43 questions in your exam. The number of questions in the exam are never fixed. OK, it varies and you will have somewhere between 37 to 43 questions and each question will have different weightage. So some question could be having 30 marks associated to them. Some could be having 50 marks associated to them. Some could be having just 20 marks associated to them. OK, so different question will have different weightage and that weightage won't be shown to you during the exam. OK, so during the exam, you have to assume that all the questions are important. OK, so the weightage of the question, the marks associated with the question won't be shown to you during the exam. So just to repeat, all the questions related to DP 100 certification will be MCQ based and you will have around 37 to 43 MCQ questions and each question will have a different weightage. OK, the total marks of DP 100 exam will be 1000 out of which you will need to score at least 700 in order to pass the exam. OK, so total you will have a thousand marks exam out of which you have to score at least 700. So that was just the overview of DP 100 exam. Any doubts with respect to overview guys? We will dive into the certification exam. We'll learn concepts that will help you to answer the questions in the certification exam ahead. Okay, but up till now, 
I have just given you an overview of the certification exam. If there are any doubts with respect to this, please let me know. OK, so just to recap, today we are going to learn about DP 100 certification exam. It is a associate level certification exam. There are three uh, levels of Microsoft certifications. First is fundamental level. Second is associate level and third is expert level. So DP 100 is an associate level exam and it will be valid up to one year period. OK, so if you get the certification, that certification will be valid only up to one year period. And in your DP 100 certification exam, all the questions will be MCQ based. You will have around 37 to 43 questions. Each question will have a different weightage. Some question could have 50 marks, uh, could be of 50 marks. Some question could be of 30 marks. Some question could be of 20 marks. And that weightage won't be shown to you in the exam. OK, it will not be shown to you in the exam. So in the exam, you have to treat each question important. OK, and the total marks of the exam will be 1000 out of which you have to score at least 700 to clear it. OK, so that was just the overview of DP 100. Now let's go ahead and guys, this DP 100 exam is entirely based on machine learning. OK, it entirely revolves around machine learning. So today what we'll do is we will start from scratch. We'll assume that the participants in the exam don't have any knowledge of machine learning. So we'll start from scratch. We will learn all the basics of machine learning. And after that, we'll go ahead and we'll see how those machine learning concepts can be used in DP 100 certification. OK, fine. So let's go ahead. As I told you, the entire DP 100 exam revolves around machine learning. So let's go ahead, guys, and let's talk about the basics of machine learning first. OK, up till now, I've given you an overview of DP 100 certification. Now, as I told you, the entire DP 100 certification is based on machine learning. So now we'll go ahead and we'll talk about the basics of machine learning. OK, fine. So let's go ahead in between, guys, while learning any of the concepts, if you have any doubts, you can ask me in the chat. OK, I will help you to clear those doubts. Fine, so let's go ahead and let's start off by learning basics of machine learning. So first, guys, let's try to understand what is machine learning. OK, so let's go ahead and let's try to understand what is machine learning. So machine learning is just a set of tools which is used for two purposes. I repeat, guys, machine learning is just a set of tools which is used for two purposes. First purpose is for inference. OK, by inference, I mean insights. So I want to get insights. OK, so I want to get insights from data. That is first reason. Second reason to use machine learning is to get predictions. OK, so I want to predict based on the data. I repeat, guys, what is machine learning? Machine learning is just a set of tools which is used for two purposes. First is to get inferences from data. By inference, I mean insights from data. So for example, let's say I have data for DMART. OK, everybody knows uh, the DMART company. So suppose I have data for DMART and looking at that data, I want to figure out that at which time uh, more customers come and buy the products, at which time less customers come and buy less products. OK, then in the DMART company, customers are focusing on which brand of products more. OK, so all of these insights that I want to get from data, all of these inferences I want to get from data that I can obtain using machine learning. So machine learning is used for two purposes. First is to get inferences from data or insights from data. Second is to get predictions from data. So suppose by looking at the data, I want to predict the future. Let's say by looking at the data of previous years. OK, so by looking at the uh, rain data of previous years, I want to figure out that in the next year, how much rainfall will occur. OK, so I want to predict the future. So machine learning can even be used for that. So machine learning, guys, is just a set of tools which is used for two purposes. First is to get inferences from data. Second is to get predictions from data. Now. How does it do that? How does it make inferences from data? How does it make predictions from data? It does that 
by using something called a machine learning model i repeat how does machine learning make inferences and predictions from data it does that by using something called a machine learning model so now what is this machine learning model you might ask well machine learning model is nothing but a statistical representation of a real world process i repeat it is nothing but a statistical representation of a real world process that means you are trying to simulate a real world process using some statistics or using some mathematics i repeat you are trying to simulate a real world process using some statistics or using some mathematics okay now before going ahead i just want to ask a few questions so guys the first thing that we learned is the definition of machine learning so guys what is machine learning according, according to you can anyone in the chat answer please anyone rajiv ashwin prashant what is machine learning anyone in the chat we learned about the definition of machine learning so according to you guys what is machine learning just to help you out we learned that machine learning is just a set of tools which is used for two purposes can any one of you tell me those two purposes yes so over here shreyas kanan prashant have given the right answer so all of you guys have given the right answer you guys are saying machine learning is just a set of tools which is used for two purposes first is to get inferences from the data second is to get predictions from data perfect okay now how does it do that guys how does it get inferences and predictions from data it does that by using what you guys are right machine learning helps us to make inferences and predictions from data but how does it help it helps us to do that by using something called machine learning model right yes shreyas has given the correct answer shreyas has rightly mentioned that we know machine learning is a set of tools which is used for making inferences from data and it is used for making predictions from data and it does that by using something called machine learning model so shreyas has given the right answer okay now the next question was what is a machine learning model so can anyone help us to answer this what is a machine learning model up till now we have learned that machine learning is a set of tools which is used for two purposes either to make inferences from data or to make predictions from data and we know that it does that by using something called machine learning model but what is this machine learning model yes prashant and uh, shreyas have given the correct answer so these guys have said that a machine learning model is just a statistical representation of a real world process a machine learning model is just a statistical representation of a real world process that means it tries to simulate that real world process using some statistics or using some mathematics i repeat what does this statement mean when i say that machine learning model is a statistical representation of a real world process it means that we are trying to simulate a real world process using some statistics or using some mathematics okay let's go ahead now guys uh, this is just a diagrammatic representation a pictorial representation of how machine learning model works so we have data now that data is fed into our machine learning model and our machine learning model gives inferences or predictions okay so to make our machine learning model work we always require some data okay i repeat in order to make any machine learning model in the world work okay any machine learning model in the world take any machine learning model in the world you want to make it work you will need some data and that data will require some rows and some columns okay and that data that you are using should have some rows and some columns now let's talk more about this data as i said in order to make any machine learning model work you need some data and that data needs to have some rows and some columns now it's very important to note that the columns in your data will be of two types okay the columns in the data that you are using will fall in one of the two types the first type of column will be called feature column and second type of column will be called target column so let's understand the difference between feature column and target column so what is feature column 
feature columns are those columns that help me to predict. I repeat, feature columns are those columns that help me to predict, whereas target column is that column that I want to predict. OK, so feature columns are those columns that will help me to predict, whereas target column is that column that I want to predict. So just to recap, guys, we have learned about the definition of machine learning. We learned that machine learning is just a set of tools which is used for two purposes, either to make inferences from data or to make predictions from data. Now, how does it do that? How does it make inferences and predictions from data? It does that by using something called a machine learning model. Now, what is a machine learning model? A machine learning model is just a statistical representation of a real world process. That means we are trying to simulate a real world process using some statistics or using some mathematics. Now, I also spoke that in order to make any machine learning model work, we need some data and that data needs to have some rows and some columns and the columns in your data should be of one of the two types. Either the column in your data will be called a feature column or the column in your data will be called a target column. What is a feature column? What is a target column? Let's see. Feature columns are those columns that help me to predict, whereas target column is that column that I want to predict. OK, up till now, if you have any doubts, then please let me know. OK, so what we have learned is we have learned the definition of machine learning. We learned about the definition of machine learning model. We also learned that in order to make any machine learning model work, we need some data and that data needs to have some rows and some columns. And apart from that, we learned that the columns in your data will fall in one of the two types. Either your column will be called a feature column or your column will be called a target column. Feature columns are those columns that help me to predict. Target column is that column that I want to predict. Fine, let's understand this difference between feature columns and target columns with the help of an example. So suppose I have some data having some rows and columns. Here you can see I have data having four rows and three columns. OK, and suppose over here in this data, I want to predict price. OK, so if I want to predict price, OK, if I want to predict price of the house, then price of the house will be which type of column, guys? Will it be called feature column or will it be called target column? Over here you can see I have three columns, square feet of the house, city of the house and price of the house. So suppose I want to predict price of the house. Then if I want to predict price of the house, then price of the house will be called which type of column? Feature column or target column, guys? Target, right? Anand and Aviril have given the correct answer. You guys have rightly said that if I want to predict on the price column, then price column will be called target column. And Aviril, can I say that square feet of the house and city of the house will help me to predict price? Can I say that? Yes, yes or no? That square feet of the house and city of the house will help me to predict price. That is why then since these columns are helping me to predict price column, since these columns are helping me to predict the target column, that is why these columns will be called my feature columns. OK, so feature columns are those columns that help me to predict, whereas target column is that column that I want to predict. OK. Just to recap over here, first we learned the definition of machine learning. We said that machine learning is just a set of tools which is used for two purposes. First purpose is to get inferences from data. Second purpose is to get predictions from data. Now, how does it do that? How does machine learning get inferences and predictions from data? It does that by using something called a machine learning model. What is a machine learning model? A machine learning model is just a statistical representation of a real world process. That means we are trying to simulate a real world process using some statistics or using some mathematics. We also learned that in order to make any machine learning model work, we need some data and that data needs to have some rows and some columns. And the columns in your data should be of one of the two types. Either your column will be called a feature column or your column will be called a target column. Feature columns are those columns that help me to predict, whereas target column is that column that I want to predict. OK, fine. So let's go ahead. And now, guys, let's talk about the different types of machine learning models. Up till now, if you, 
if you guys have any doubts you can ask me in the chat okay i am assuming that up till now it's clear to you guys okay so i am moving ahead fine so now guys let's talk about the types of machine learning models so there are two main types of machine learning models there are other types also but mainly your machine learning models are of two types okay i repeat there are other types of machine learning models also but mainly in your industry you will work with these two types of machine learning models first is called a supervised machine learning model second is called a unsupervised machine learning model okay before i go ahead over here one student has posted a doubt anil has posted doubt anil is saying that machine learning model ha huh, yes yes whether you are implementing that machine learning model on cloud or whether you are implementing on your local laptop anil does not matter your machine learning model is the same okay in the background same things are happening it's just that if you implement it on cloud then you can use the benefits of cloud like compute network uh, sorry compute storage and security these are the three benefits of cloud okay if you do not want to use it on cloud use it on your own local laptop but same exact thing will happen nothing is different okay fine so uh, coming to the topic that we were trying to understand we were trying to learn about the different types of machine learning models so there are many types of machine learning models out of which we are going to study two main types of machine learning models today first type is called supervised machine learning models second type is called unsupervised machine learning models so what is the difference between the two so in supervised machine learning models the data that i am using has features and target both okay i repeat in supervised machine learning models the data that i am using has features and target both whereas in unsupervised machine learning models the data that i am using only has features but does not have target okay so that is the difference between these two different types of models okay we are we are learning about two main types of machine learning models first is supervised machine learning model second is unsupervised machine learning model so in supervised machine learning model the data that i am using has features and target both whereas in unsupervised machine learning model the data that i am using only has features but does not have target okay fine now it's important to note that supervised machine learning models are further of two types first is classification models second is regression models so what is the difference between the two in classification models the target column has finite set of possibilities whereas in regression model the target column that i am using has infinite set of possibilities let's understand this with the help of example okay so we'll understand the difference between classification model and regression model with the help of a example okay and for that example i will need to draw something on the screen so suppose guys i have a target column called dice roll okay dice roll so whenever i will roll a dice whatever value comes i will just store it in this column so suppose when i roll a dice i get the value 6 so i will mention 6 after that again if i roll the dice let's say i get the value 2 so i'll write 2 again if i roll the dice i will get the value let's say 4 so i will mention 4 okay again if i roll the dice suppose i get the value 1 so i'll write 1 and so on okay so over here in this column i'm storing the values that i get after rolling the dice okay and suppose this is the column on which i want to predict okay i want to predict the outcome of dice roll if i want to predict the outcome of dice roll then dice roll will be my target column okay now you tell me guys that in this dice roll column in this target column how many different kind of values are possible when i roll a dice how many values are possible if i roll a dice how many values are possible six right anandan has given the correct answer that if i roll a dice six values are possible either i can get the value 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 apart from these six values i cannot get anything else when i roll a dice so can i say guys that in dice roll i have finite set of outcomes or finite set of possibilities yes yes or no 
that when I roll a dice, I have finite set of outcomes or I have finite set of possibilities. So you guys are saying that in my target column, I have finite set of outcomes or finite set of possibilities. If in my target column, I have finite set of outcomes or finite set of possibilities, then the model will be called a classification model. Okay. So if in your model, the target column has finite set of possibilities, then your column will be called a sorry, then your model will be called a classification model. Suppose on the other hand, you have a column like gender and you want to predict on this gender column. So gender column will be your target column. Now we know that as far as gender is concerned, there are only two possibilities, male or female. Okay. So suppose I am storing the gender of every person in this webinar. Let's say the first person that registered was male. Second person that registered was male again. Third person that registered was female and so on. Okay, so like this, I'm storing the gender of every participant in this webinar. Now you see in this gender column, there are only finite set of possibilities. There are only two possibilities, male or female. So you're saying in your gender column, you have finite set of possibilities. Gender column is my target column. Suppose in my target column, if I have finite set of possibilities, then my model will be called a classification model. Okay, similarly, let's take one more example. Suppose I want to predict stock price. Okay. I want to predict price of a stock. So if I want to predict price of a stock, then this price of stock will be my target. Okay. And let's say I am storing the uh, stock price stock price details of a company. Okay. So let's say on the first day, the stock uh, the stock price of that company was 100 rupees. Next day it was 99.2 rupees. After that, on the third day, it was 102.35 rupees and so on. Okay. So now you tell me, guys, if I take into account stock price, then in stock price, do I have finite set of possibilities or infinite set of possibilities? Finite or infinite? What do I have? Stock price. Anandan has given the correct answer. Right. So as far as stock price is concerned, Rajiv has also given the correct answer. Rajiv, Kanan, Shreyas, all of you guys have given the correct answer that as far as stock price is concerned, then I have infinite set of possibilities. Okay. In stock price, my stock price could be 99.111 on rupee. It could be 100 rupee. It could be 1000 rupee. Okay. My stock price could be anything. So as far as my stock price is concerned, I have infinite set of possibilities. So that means you are saying in my target column, I have infinite set of possibilities. And if in my target column, I have infinite set of possibilities, then that model will be called a regression model. Okay, fine. So we have just understood the different types of machine learning models. So just to recap guys, there are many types of machine learning models out of which today we studied two. First was supervised, second was unsupervised. So guys, what is the difference between supervised machine learning models and unsupervised machine learning models? Can anyone tell me the difference? What is the difference between supervised machine learning models and unsupervised machine learning models? Just to recap, we are learning about the different types of machine learning models. There are many different types of machine learning models out of which today we studied two. First was supervised machine learning models. Second was unsupervised machine learning models. So what is the difference between supervised and unsupervised machine learning models? Shreyas has given the correct answer. Shreyas has rightly said that in supervised machine learning models, I have feature and target column both. Okay. In supervised machine learning model, the data that I'm using has feature and target column both. And that is exactly what is what is said by Anandan also. He has also said the correct answer. He has said that in supervised machine learning model, the data that I'm using has feature and target both. Whereas in unsupervised machine learning model, the data that I'm using only has feature, but it does not have target. Okay. So in supervised machine learning model, the data that I'm using has feature and target both. Whereas in unsupervised machine learning model, the data that I'm using only has features, but does not have target. Okay. Then we learned that supervised machine learning models are of two types. First is classification models. Second is regression models. So guys, what is the difference between classification and regression? Can anybody tell me the difference? Difference between classification and regression. So the previous question was answered correctly by Shreyas and Anandan. 
However, this question, uh, who will answer? Okay, so Shreyas has given the correct answer. Shreyas has correctly mentioned the difference between classification and regression. Even Anandan has done the same. So these guys are saying that in classification model, my target column has finite set of possibilities, whereas in regression model, my target column has infinite set of possibilities. Right. Anil, Govandraj have also given the correct answer. You guys have rightly said that in classification model, my target has finite set of possibilities, whereas in regression model, my target has infinite set of possibilities. Okay. So guys, up till now, are the basics of machine learning clear to you guys? I will just do a quick recap and then let me know. So let me do a full recap. So first we learned the definition of machine learning, right? First, we learned the definition of machine learning. We said that machine learning is just a set of tools which is used for two purposes. First is to get inferences from data. Second is to get predictions from data. How does it do that? How does machine learning get inferences and predictions from data? It does that by using something called a machine learning model. What is a machine learning model? It is just a statistical representation of a real world process. That means we are trying to simulate a real world process using some statistics or using some mathematics. Then we learn that in order to make any machine learning model work, we need some data and that data needs to have some rows and some columns. OK, and the columns in your data should be of one of the two types. Either your column should be a feature column or a column should be a target column. Feature columns are those columns that help me to predict. Target column is that column that I want to predict. OK, then we learned that machine learning models are of different different types out of which we are going to study two today. The first type that we studied was supervised machine learning models. The second type that we studied was unsupervised machine learning models. What is the difference between supervised and unsupervised models? Well, in supervised machine learning models, the data that I'm using has features and target both. Whereas in unsupervised machine learning models, the data that I'm using only has features but does not have target. Then we learned that supervised machine learning models are of two types. First is classification. Second is regression. So what is the difference between classification and regression models? In classification models, my target column has finite set of possibilities, whereas in regression model, my target column has infinite set of possibility. OK, so those were the basic concepts of machine learning. Up till now, guys, any doubt whatsoever? Any doubt? You can let me know. I will help you to solve that doubt. Up till now, understanding? Yes, I will assume that you have understood and I will go ahead. But if you have any doubts whatsoever, you can please let me know. Ha, huh, yes. So Kanan says, let's understand the definition of machine learning. Let's do that. So Kanan, we learned what machine learning does. We learn that machine learning is nothing but a set of tools which is used for two purposes. First is to get inferences from data. Second is to get predictions from data. By inference, what do I mean? I mean insights. OK, inference basically means insights. So I want to get insights from data. So suppose Kanan, I have data for a company called DMART. OK, we know there is a popular company in India called DMART. Let's have data for DMART. And looking at the data, I want to know that at which time of the day more customers come into DMART, at which time of the day less customers come into DMART, then at which season customers buy, uh, uh, let's say, pizzas more, okay, then at which season customers buy pizzas less, okay. I want to get such insights from data because looking at those insights, I can make better business decisions. OK, so for example, if I know that at evening more customers come, then I will make sure that at evening I will have more helpers OK, to help the customers. OK, then if I know that, OK, which uh, with this product uh, customers usually buy the second product also. For example, if a customer is buying the base of pizza, OK, a pizza bread, then along with it, customers usually also buy Oregano, uh, so they buy chili flakes bottle, right? And uh, they can also buy sauces. Okay, so 
looking at the data, I can find out that, okay, if a customer is buying pizza base, he might also buy pizza sauce along with it. He might also buy chili flakes along with it. Okay, so I will make sure that the bottle for sauce, the bottle for chili flakes is placed next to the uh, pizza bread. Okay, so customer does not have to roam around and uh, okay, go to different different places to buy chili flakes, go to different place to buy pizza bread. Okay, so everything related to pizza will be in one section only. That will be more useful to the customer and customer will be more uh, willing to buy that product from you. Okay, so basically by inference, I mean insights from data. Okay, I want to get insights from data and using those insights, I can make better business decisions. Okay, so as I told you, I gave you some example of insights saying that uh, at which time of the day more customers come into DMART, at which time of the day less customers come into DMART. Based on that data, I can make better business decisions. Okay, so by inference, I mean insights. Then what do I mean by predictions? Prediction basically mean I want to, as the word suggests, I want to predict the future. Okay, so suppose I have weather related data. So looking at weather of previous years, I want to predict weather of the next year. I can do that. Okay, so if you want to predict the future, you can do it with help of machine learning also. Okay, so machine learning is used for two things, either to make inferences from data or to make predictions from data. Okay, another example of predictions could be, let's say I have data of Corona cases. Okay, so looking at data of previous Corona cases, I can get an idea that, okay, tomorrow, uh, how many cases are likely to occur? Okay, so machine learning, as I said, is used for two purposes. First is to get inferences from data. By inference, I mean insights. Second is to get predictions from data. Okay, Kanan, any doubt, buddy? If there is still any doubt, you can let me know. One second, let me view the chat. Understood, okay, fine. So let's go ahead. And now what we'll do guys is we will try to understand how machine learning can be implemented on Azure Cloud, okay? So you can implement machine learning model anywhere. You can implement it on your local laptop or you can implement it on some cloud platform, okay? So if you are implementing on some cloud platform like Azure, then what does Azure offer? Okay, so Azure offers three approaches to make machine learning models. How many approaches guys? Azure offers three approaches to make machine learning models. First approach is by using something called Azure ML Notebook. Okay, second approach is by using something called Azure ML Designer. Okay, Azure ML Designer. And third approach is by using something called Azure Auto ML. So let's see what is the difference in these three approaches. All the three approaches are used to make machine learning model. Outcome of all the three approaches is the exact same. It is just that how we go about making those models is different in all these three approaches. So let's understand that difference. Okay, let's understand that difference over here. So in case of Azure ML Notebook, you have to implement the steps of machine learning. Okay, you have to implement the steps of machine learning. And along with that, you also have to write, you also have to write the code for those steps. Okay, you have to write the code for those steps. So the first approach is usually preferred by experienced guys. Okay, experienced guys who have knowledge of machine learning, they know that in machine learning, what, what steps are required and in order to implement them, what code should be written. Okay, so that is the approach that is followed by experienced guys. Then in the second approach, which is called Azure ML Designer, what is the difference? Here also I have to implement the steps for machine learning. It is just that there is no need to write code for those steps. Okay, there is no need to write the code for those steps. Okay, so you just have to specify these steps. The code will be taken care of by Azure Machine Learning Designer. Okay, the code will be taken care of by Azure Machine Learning Designer. You don't have to worry about the code. Whereas in Azure AutoML, what happens? You do not have to implement these steps. No need to implement these steps. Okay, 
no need to implement steps of machine learning no need to implement steps of machine learning as well as there is no need to write the code for those steps okay as well as there is no need to write the code for those steps so just to repeat if you are trying to make machine learning model on azure cloud platform then there are three ways in which you can do it first way or first approach is called azure ml notebook second way or second approach is called azure ml designer third way or third approach is azure auto ml okay what is the difference between these approaches in case of azure ml notebook you have to implement the steps for machine learning and you have to write the code for those steps okay instead of implement let me use another term specify let me use another term over here specify so you have to specify the steps of machine learning apart from that you also have to mention the code for those steps whereas in case of azure ml designer you just have to specify the steps of machine learning no need to mention the code on the other hand if i talk about the third approach which is azure auto ml in that scenario you do not have to specify the steps neither do you have to write the code for those steps okay so just to recap guys how many approaches are available in azure cloud platform to make a machine learning model how many approaches do we have how many approaches three right we have three approaches perfect uh, before that over here one student asked the doubt uh, one student is saying when will we take a lunch break uh, so lunch break we will take at 1 pm okay and uh, uh, tea break i will just take it right now at 11 am only okay so tea break will be taken right now for uh, 15 minutes so from 11 am up till 11 15 we will take a tea break after that lunch break we will take from 1 pm to 2 pm okay and after that one more doubt has been asked by anil so anil is saying can you explain unsupervised model with example okay fine so anil suppose i want to predict traffic sign okay i want to predict traffic sign based on the images so for example anil can i say in case of tesla car is tesla car predicting the traffic signs or not so tesla car is continuously taking images and looking at those images it is predicting the traffic sign okay so i want to predict traffic sign over here now in order to predict traffic sign what does tesla car use forget coding what does tesla car use in order to predict those traffic signs what does tesla car use guys what does it use camera yes okay correct using that camera what does it do can i say it captures images essentially anil yes using that camera it captures images continuously and looking at those images it then predicts whether that image is a mountain whether that image is a traffic sign whether that image is that of a passing by car or whatever okay so using that camera it captures images so it and using those images it predicts something so can i say anil images acts as a feature for tesla car because using images it is trying to predict something so can i say images are nothing but features for my tesla car okay now anil is it possible that you have a data set wherein a uh, you capture images of different different objects in the world and you also give it a target okay or you also give it a label target is also called a label okay in other words target value is also called a label value so sometimes it might not be possible that you capture images for different different objects in the world and give it a label because can i say there are lakhs of different objects in the world there are literally lakhs and lakhs of different objects in the world will it be possible for me to give it a label that this image is of mountain this image is of a person this image is of uh, passing by car it will be difficult so sometimes it's difficult to provide labels for my features and whenever it's difficult to provide labels for my features i do not give it a label and i directly go ahead and work with my feature values only okay so that is just the example so usually in cases of image processing like let's say in case of tesla okay uh, usually whenever it builds a machine learning model it would not have labels for all the images that it has generated it would not have a target value for all the images that it has generated it's not possible because there are lakhs of different objects in the world 
okay literally lakhs and crores of different objects in the world it's not possible to give labels to each of those images to each of those objects okay so if it's not possible to give a label or if not possible to give a target value to each of those objects then you will proceed without that target value and if you are proceeding without that target value and building machine learning model then that is called a unsupervised machine learning model okay so in your unsupervised machine learning model you build a machine learning model but without the presence of your target column okay up till now understanding guys okay this is just a scenario that i have given when i will show you the implementation it will make more sense okay but this is just the example that i have given that sometimes it's not possible to assign a target value for your features okay so in that scenario you will you will proceed without your target value okay now baskar says could you please tell about config file and why saving it in the same folder and also what it contains okay in our scenario buddy config file will be won't be used but i will show you ahead why config file could be used okay going further i will show you that ahead but for now we won't talk about config file because in none of our examples we will use it but why config file could be used that i will show you it so don't worry okay but for now we won't talk about it because at least for the next one hour or two hours we are not going to use anything about config file so after that i will definitely answer your doubt okay and we'll understand what, how and why it is required okay fine so just to recap over here first we learned about the basics of machine learning we learned what is machine learning we learned that it is used for two purposes either to make inferences from data or to make predictions from data we also learned that inferences and predictions are made by using something called machine learning model which is nothing but a statistical representation of a real world process and we learned that in order to make any machine learning model work we need some data and that data needs to have some rows and some columns also the columns in your data needs to be of two types feature column or target column feature columns are those columns that help me to predict target column is that column that i want to predict then after that we learned that machine learning models are of two types are mainly of two types supervised and unsupervised supervised machine learning models are those models where my data has features and target both whereas unsupervised machine learning models are those models where my data only has features but does not have target then we learned that supervised machine learning models are further of two types classification and regression in classification model my target has finite set of possibility whereas in regression model my target has infinite set of possibility so we learned about the basics of machine learning and we learned that in order to implement machine learning on on azure cloud platform we have three approaches okay first approach is called azure ml notebook second approach is called azure ml designer and third approach is called azure auto ml so we'll take a tea break after the tea break we'll come back and we'll look into each of these three approaches and we will also do hands on on all these three approaches okay so we will do that after the tea break up till now i am assuming that everything that i have spoken is clear did it make sense up till now i am assuming that it is clear but if you have any doubts guys you are free to ask yes okay fine so let's take a tea break guys we'll take a tea break up till 11:20 okay after that we'll be back so let's take a tea break up till 11:20 okay so i'll mention over here tea break up till 11:20 after that we'll be back and we'll see how to implement machine learning on azure cloud platform till then i'll just keep my mic on mute and after 11:20 we will continue our journey with machine learning okay
All right, guys. So welcome back. And now we will resume our journey of machine learning. So let's go ahead. So as uh, we said earlier before the tea break, we learned about the basics of machine learning. Uh, we learned what machine learning is used for. We learned that in order to use machine learning, we need something called machine learning model. And we learned that if I want to implement Azure, uh, if I want to implement machine learning on Azure Cloud Platform, there are three ways in which you can do it. First is called Azure ML Notebook. Second is called Azure ML Designer. And third is called Azure Auto ML. Fine. So we'll go ahead. And what we'll do now is we will look into one machine learning model. Okay, we'll look into the theory of one machine learning model because there are literally many, many machine learning models out there. Okay, uh, you will see literally 30 to 40, even more than that. Uh, you will have many, many machine learning models. So today it's not possible to cover all of those machine learning model, models because to do that will literally need two weeks of time. So what we'll do today is we'll just cover one machine learning model and we'll see how to implement them with each of these three approaches, how to implement it with notebook, how to implement it with designer, and how to implement it with AutoML. So let's go ahead and do that. And the name of that machine learning model that we'll cover is called KNN, okay? KNN stands for K nearest neighbors. So we'll see how this machine learning model works and we'll see how to implement that machine learning model with each of these three approaches on Azure. We have spoken about these three approaches. So we'll see how to implement that machine learning model using each of these three approaches. So let's go ahead. Okay, now before going ahead over here, Bhaskar has a doubt. Uh, Bhaskar, yes, but there are ways in which I can implement unsupervised learning also. I will show you how, okay? There is a way in which I can use that third approach to implement unsupervised machine learning model also, and I will show you, so don't worry. Fine, for now what we'll do is we'll just understand that there are three approaches of making a machine learning model on Azure Cloud Platform. And what we'll do is we'll learn about one machine learning model and we'll see how that machine learning model can be implemented with each of those three approaches. So the name of that machine learning model that we'll cover is called KNN or K nearest neighbors, okay? KNN stands for K nearest neighbors. So in order to make this machine learning model work, we need some data. So suppose I have some data over here in which I have three columns, experience, age, and gender. So suppose out of those three columns, experience and age are my feature columns, whereas gender is my target column. Okay. So I repeat guys, in order to make this machine learning model called KNN work, okay, I need some data. So suppose I have some data having three columns, uh, experience, age, and gender. Out of these three columns, experience and age are suppose your feature columns, and let's say gender is your target column. Okay, now using this data, how can I go ahead and make this model called KNN? Okay, using this data, how can I go ahead and make this model called KNN? Let's go ahead and let's see it. So what are the steps to do it? Now, what I will do is before implementing those steps, I will plot this data onto a graph, okay? And I will plot it in such a way that the points which have a gender of male should be colored as red and the points that have gender of female should be colored in blue, okay? So let me just go ahead and plot this data onto a graph. So let's go ahead. First, I will take the data in the first row in the first row, age is 21 and experience is one year. Okay, so I'll accordingly plot the point and the gender value in the first row is male. So I'll make sure that the point is colored in red. Similarly, let me plot the point for the second row of the data. In the second row, age is 22 and experience is two years. So I will plot the second point accordingly. And in the second row, gender is male. So I'll make sure that the second point is also colored in red. Similarly, let me plot the point with respect to the third row. In the third row, age is 23, experience is three years. So I will plot the point accordingly. And the gender in the third row is female. So I'll make sure that the point is colored in blue. Similarly, let me go ahead and let me plot the point associated with the fourth row as well. So what I have done is I had some data and that data I have just plotted onto the graph. 
now what i want to do is i want to understand that using this data how can i build this model called knn using this data how can i build this model called knn let's go ahead and let's see it so the first step to do it is what let's understand this step by the way guys why are we building a machine learning model machine learning model is used for two purposes first is to make inferences from data second is to make predictions from data so suppose today i want to use my machine learning model to make predictions so i want to predict that if suppose age is 22 and experience is one year then what is the gender i want to predict the gender of this person okay we know that machine learning model is used for two purposes either to make inference or to get predictions so suppose today i want to use it to get predictions i want to predict what is the gender of the person if the age is 22 years and experience is one year okay fine so this time i want to use my machine learning model for prediction so how to build that machine learning model using the data that we have let's see okay before going ahead this additional row of data that i have over here i will just go ahead and plot that onto the graph okay but for this row i don't know the gender value so i will make sure that the point for this row is not colored with either blue or red i will just color it with gray just to signify that i don't know the gender for this point fine now what i want to do is using the data that i have over here i want to go ahead and build this model called knn using the data that i have i want to go ahead and build this model called knn so let's see how to do it what are the steps first step is to choose the number of neighbors okay i repeat first step is to choose the number of neighbors so suppose i am choosing number of neighbors equal to 3 okay suppose just for the sake of the example i am choosing number of neighbors equal to 3 so first step was to choose number of neighbors i have done that suppose i have chosen number of neighbors equal to 3 then second step is depending upon the number of neighbors we have to select that many closest label points so guys how many number of neighbors did we select earlier how many number of neighbors did we select earlier just in the previous step how many did we select three right we selected three number of neighbors kanan and nishita right we selected three number of neighbors and because we selected three number of neighbors that is why we will select three closest label data points okay because we selected three number of neighbors that is why we will select three closest label data points with respect to what we will select three closest label data points with respect to my unlabeled data point this is my unlabeled data point with respect to my unlabeled data point i will select three closest label data points okay what is labeled data point what is unlabeled data point labeled data points are those data points for which i know the target value so for example these four data points are labeled data points i know the target value for these four data points whereas on the other hand unlabeled data point is that data point for which i do not know the target value for example for this data point i do not know the target value so this data point will be known as my unlabeled data point okay fine so we are into our second step second step is depending upon the number of neighbors we have to select that many closest labeled data points with respect to the unlabeled data point so there were three closest label sorry there were three number of neighbors that we selected that is why we will select three closest label data points with respect to my unlabeled data point okay so over here with respect to my unlabeled unlabeled data point let me select three closest label data points and i have done that okay with respect to my unlabeled data point i have selected three closest label data points now step 3 what is step 3 step 3 is to make all of the selected label points to vote okay step 3 is to make all of the selected label points to vote so i have selected three labeled points all of these three labeled points will vote red points will vote red blue points will vote blue so guys how many votes will go to red if red points will vote red blue points will vote blue then how many points will go to red can you let me know two right two points will go to so two votes will go to red and how many votes will go to blue how many votes will go to blue one one vote will go to blue over here one vote will go to blue so third step is to make all of the selected label points to vote okay over here one student has a doubt so let's try to solve that doubt after that we'll go ahead okay so the doubt that the student has is let me first read it rajiv says 
but where is it coming from okay let's try to understand it so rajiv what are we trying to do over here buddy what we are trying to do is i am trying to explain you the theory of one machine learning model called knn and then rajiv we will see how that machine learning model can be implemented on azure ml notebook how it can be implemented on azure ml designer and how it can be implemented on azure auto ml okay but before doing that we are trying to understand the theory of one machine learning model called what raji what is the name of this machine learning model that we are covering what is the name just to recap the name of this machine learning model is knn right knn or k nearest neighbors perfect raji has given the correct answer that the name of this machine learning model that we are covering is called knn or k nearest neighbors okay now rajiv can i say that in order to make this machine learning model called knn work i need some data yes or no in order to make any machine learning model work we need some data so similarly in order to make knn work also we'll need some data so suppose i have some data rajiv wherein i have three columns experience age and gender out of these three columns let's say experience and age are my feature columns whereas gender is my target column so as you uh, correctly said rajiv that just like for making any machine learning model work we need some data similarly in order to make knn work also we will need some data and suppose this is the data that is there in front of you in this data i have recorded the details of the participants in the webinar so suppose first participant in the webinar had a age of 21 years he had a industry experience of 1 year and suppose the gender of that uh, attendee was male similarly let's say the second attendee in the webinar has a age of 22 years has a experience of 2 years in the industry and let's say that the gender of that person was male similarly i have recorded the details of the third attendee in the webinar and similarly i have recorded the details of the fourth attendee in the webinar so over here i have recorded the details of the attendees of the webinar over here okay fine so rajiv you correctly said earlier that in order to make any machine learning model work we need some data similarly in order to make knn work also we need some data and this is the data that is there in front of us now rajiv why do we use machine learning for two purposes what are they and before do, going there rajiv before going there up till now what you have understood is we are learning about a machine learning model called knn in order to make it work i need some data and this is the data that i have okay and what i will do rajiv is i will just plot that data onto the graph and while plotting i will make sure that the points which have a gender value of male are colored in red while the points which have a gender value of female are colored in blue so up till now rajiv have you understood that i just had some data and that data i have plotted onto the graph yes Uh, Raji, we will first take a simple example. Okay. After that, if you want, I will take a complex example. If you want. Okay. Fine. So, Raji, over here, what I have is I had some data. You correctly said earlier that in order to make any machine learning model work, I need some data. Okay. So, I have some data. You can see it is there on the left hand side of your screen. And what I have done is I have plotted data onto the graph. Up till now, Raji, clear? I have just plotted data onto the graph. any doubt up till now i had some data i have just plotted it onto the graph yes okay fine now rajiv why is machine learning used buddy for two purposes what are they what are they machine learning is used for two purposes what are they ha huh. you have given the correct answer rajiv first is to get insights second is to get prediction so suppose rajiv today i want to use machine learning to make prediction okay i want to predict the target value so today what i want to do i want to use machine learning to get prediction i want to predict the target value i want to predict that if the age of the person is 22 years and if the experience the industry experience of the person is 1 year then what is the target value of that person so i want to predict the target value you correctly said rajiv that machine learning is used for two purposes 
in order to make insights or to make prediction suppose today i want to use it to make predictions okay suppose today i want to use it to make predictions so rajiv now can i say that i have fifth row of data over here can i say that that i have fifth row of data yes i have inserted a fifth row of data even that row of data will plot onto the graph so even that row of data will plot onto the graph over here in the fifth row of data age is 22 and experience is one year so i will plot that point accordingly but rajiv do i know the target value of this point do i know the target value do i know the target value no since i do not know the target value that's why what i will do is i'll plot the point but i will color it with gray color to signify that i do not know the target value okay uh, if i knew that its target value was male i would have colored it with red if i knew that its target value was female i would have colored it with blue but here i do not know the target value of this point that is why i will color it with gray just to signify that i do not know the target value i want to predict it going uh, further but currently i do not know the target value okay so i have some data i have just plotted that data onto the graph now rajiv what we will do is using this data i will go ahead and build this model called knn okay so let's do it so rajiv the first step to do it buddy is to select the number of neighbors to choose the number of neighbors or to select number of neighbors so suppose rajiv i am choosing number of neighbors equal to 3 okay just for the sake of the example over here i am choosing number of neighbors equal to 3 so rajiv first step any doubt buddy first step was to select number of neighbors and suppose here just for the sake of the example i have chosen number of neighbors equal to 3 up till here in the first step in doubt clear okay now rajiv second step buddy is that depending upon my number of neighbors i have to select that many closest labeled points with respect to my unlabeled data point by the way what are labeled data points what are unlabeled data points labeled data points are those data points that have a target value with them okay whereas unlabeled data points are those data points that do not have a target value with them okay unlabeled data points are those data points that do not have a target value so rajiv looking at this graph buddy can you let me know how many labeled data points do i have how many data points have a target value with them in total four perfect rajiv and rajiv looking at this graph can you tell me how many unlabeled data points do i have how many data points do not have a target value one perfect fine so rajiv now we are into our second step second step is depending upon my number of neighbors i will select that many closest labeled data points with respect to my unlabeled data point so rajiv this is my unlabeled data point as you rightly said so with respect to my unlabeled data point i will select three closest labeled data points so rajiv can i say that this is the first closest labeled data point yes or no this is the first one i have put an arrow to it agreed yes okay similarly this is the second closest labeled data point i have put an arrow to it and then this is the third closest labeled data points data point you can say i've put a arrow to it so depending upon the number of neighbors i had to select that many closest labeled data points since i selected three number of neighbors that is why i will select three closest labeled data points and over here based on the closeness i have selected three closest labeled data points up till now clear rajiv second step clear buddy okay i'm assuming that it is clear if there is any doubt what ha huh. so suppose if uh, you are saying if two label points are at the exact same distance then what will happen are you asking that here it's easy to know which da data point is closer and which data point is far away ha huh. but if they if two data points are the are at the exact same distance then what will happen then if let's say two data points are at the exact same distance then any one out of those two data points will be taken randomly so if there is a tie between the two data points then any one out of them will be taken randomly okay any one out of them will be taken randomly the word randomly is important okay so if there is a tie between two uh, data points because of their distance okay then any one out of those data points will be taken randomly understood rajiv yes ha anyone 
Okay, fine. So here over here in this example, it's easy to know which data point is closer, which data point is far away. Let's say if uh, two data points were at the exact same distance, then we would take any one out of those two data points randomly. Okay, so for, for example over here, uh, just to give you an example, uh, let's say that this is my unlabeled data point. I have to select three closest labeled data points. We know that this is the first closest labeled data point. We know that this is the second closest labeled data point. Now suppose there is a tie between these two labeled data points. Okay, I want I can select only three because we know that depending upon the number of my neighbors, I have to select that many closest labeled data points. Since I selected three number of neighbors, that is why I will select three closest labeled data points, out of which two I have already selected. Now only one is left. But suppose if there is a tie between the uh, data points and only one can be selected, then out of these two data points, I will randomly select any one. Okay, but here there is no tie, of course, because I know that this data point is more closer to the other data point. So I will select the one that is more closer. Okay, fine. So over your second step was depending upon my number of neighbors, I will select that many closest labeled data points with respect to my unlabeled data point. So that was the second step. Fine. I did that over here. We did that. Third step was to make all of the selected label points to vote. So I have selected three label points. All of those three label points will vote. Okay. So Rajiv, all of these three label points will now vote buddy. Red points will vote red. Blue points will vote blue. So Rajiv, how many votes will go to red? How many votes will go to red? Can you let the chat know? How many votes will go to red? Two, perfect. Two votes will go to red. And Rajiv, how many votes will go to blue? How many votes will go to blue? One, perfect. So third step was to make all of the selected data points to vote. And over here I had selected three labeled data points. So all of the three voted. And two votes went to red and one vote went to blue now fourth step is based on the majority of the votes i will assign a label to the unlabeled data point so guys majority of the vote votes went to which color red or blue majority of the votes went to which color red or blue which color guys red anandan and overall have given the correct answer that majority of the votes have given to red guys red color which means which target value Red color means which target value? Red color denotes a target value of male. That means I am predicting that this unlabeled data point has a target value of male. That means I am predicting that this unlabeled data point over here has a target value of male. Okay. So where you can see I have used my KNN model to obtain a prediction. Okay. So over here we learned how KNN model works. It is the simplest of all models out there. Okay, and we just saw how it works. And we know that you can use the KNN model for two purposes, either to make insights or to make predictions. Here we use my KNN model to make predictions. Okay, I guess I missed some doubt in between. Let me just view that doubt over here. Uh, no, Anil. Anil over here, what happened was, in my first step, I selected three number of neighbors. That is why I selected three closest label data points. But Anil, if let's say I had selected four number of neighbors, then how many uh, closest label data points will I select in my next step? If I had selected four number of neighbors, then I would select four closest label data points. Okay. If I had selected five number of neighbors, I would select five closest label data points. If I would have selected seven number of neighbors, I would select seven number of closest label data points and so on. Okay. So over here, the choice of how many number of neighbors you want to select is upon you. In this example, I selected three label. Uh, in this example, I selected three number of neighbors because I selected three number of neighbors. That's why in my next step, I selected three closest label data points. If I would have selected five number of neighbors, I would have selected five closest label data points and so on. OK, so how many numbers you want to select that depends upon you. OK, up till now understanding. Anil says choice of ha. So Anil, what we have to make sure is that my number of neighbors should always be less than the total number of labeled points available. Okay. So for example, if I have four number of uh, if I have four labeled points, then my number of neighbors should always be less than or equal to four. But Anil, a question. Can I say over here that for us humans, it's very difficult to know 
that which number of neighbors to choose because here with number of neighbors equal to 3 i got a prediction that the unlabeled point has a label of male let's suppose i choose another number of neighbors okay just to give you an example let me give you an example for that i will just open up a new slide okay let me just show it to you let me just show it to you with the help of a example let me open up a slide over here uh one second let me just check in which slide do i have that diagram i do have one diagram over here huh. so let me open up that diagram uh where is it it would be somewhere below ha huh, here we go now okay let's understand anil so where we have understood the four steps but out of the four steps first step is very important choosing number of neighbors now how do i know which number of neighbors to choose okay because depending upon my number of neighbors my outcome will change let me just show it to you let me prove it to you for example over here let's assume guys that in the middle this is my unlabeled data point and if i select three number of neighbors okay if i select three number of neighbors so i will select three closest labeled data points all of the labeled points will vote and guys majority of the votes will go to which color brown or green majority of the votes will go to which color brown or green over here which color guys i have selected let's say three closest labeled data points so all of the three label closest labeled data points will vote majority of the votes will go to brown that is why the unlabeled data point will be given a label of brown that means i am predicting that the unlabeled data point has a color of brown okay now suppose instead of three number of neighbors i select five number of neighbors okay now let's suppose that with respect to my unlabeled data point with respect to my unlabeled data point in the middle i am selecting five number of neighbors 1 2 3 4 5 now all of these five labeled points will vote so now guys majority of the votes will go to which color brown or green now majority of the votes will go to which color brown color or green color now it will go to green color that means i am predicting okay so now i am predicting that the target value of the unlabeled data point is green so can i say guys that depending upon my number of neighbors my prediction is changing yes or no depending upon my number of neighbors my prediction is changing yes so choosing correct number of neighbors is very important now as humans how will i know which number of neighbors to choose from right so in order to do that we have a technique called hyperparameter tuning okay in order to help us find out the best number of neighbors we have a technique called hyperparameter tuning okay so number of neighbors is one parameter then similarly uh, you could have different different parameters in your models okay this is just knn model here i have one parameter called number of neighbors i just have to worry about number of neighbors over here okay i just have to worry about one parameter called number of neighbors in different different models you could have different number of parameters to worry about so how to find the correct value for those parameters in order to find out correct value of those parameters we have a technique called hyperparameter tuning okay hyperparameter tuning helps us to find the correct value for a parameter okay it helps us to find the correct value for a parameter because for us humans it's very difficult to find out that which value should i give to this parameter which value should i give to number of neighbors okay but in order to help me do that we have this technique called hyperparameter tuning okay in this knn model i just have one major parameter to worry about which is number of neighbors in different different machine learning models you could have different different number of parameters to worry about in some machine learning models you could have four to five parameters to worry about in knn i just have one major parameter to worry about which is number of neighbors in different different models you could have different number of parameters to worry about so how to find out the best value for each of those parameters we will use a technique called hyperparameter tuning okay and how to implement that para hyperparameter tuning technique i will show you ahead okay for now just remember that in order to find the correct value for parameter we use a technique called hyperparameter tuning okay so just to revise those steps over here before revising over here one student has a doubt pravilika says what if there are more than two features pravilika over here in my scenario pravilika i just had two features 
that's why the graph that I made was two dimensional. If I had two features, the graph will be two dimensional. If I have three features, my graph will be three dimensional. If I have one feature, my graph will be one dimensional. If I have four features, my graph will be having four axes. If I have five features, my graph will be having five axes. Okay, and so on. However, in this slide, it will be difficult to create a graph of more than two axes. Okay. But the concept still remains the same, Pravilka. The concept though still remains the same. Still the same steps will apply. It's just that if I have one feature, the graph will be one dimensional. If I have two features, my graph that I will plot will be two dimensional. If I have three features, my graph will have three axes. If I have four features, my graph will have four axes and so on. But Pravilka, the concept in the background still remains the same. The steps and the concept will remain the same regardless of how many fe number of fe feature columns I have, whether I have one feature column or two feature column and so on. Okay, fine. Now let's go ahead guys. And what we have done is we have understood the theory of my first machine learning model called KNN. So guys, what was the first step in KNN? First step in KNN, it might come in your uh, certification exam. First step, Anybody remembers the first step? There are four steps in total. What is the first? If anybody asks you in the interview, in your job interview, or in your DP100 exam, they might ask you these steps of KNN. You will say there are four steps, out of which first step is? Ha, huh. Ananda, that is done before implementing steps. You are correct. Okay. So, but after doing that, what are the steps? And the first step has been correctly given by Ishita over here. Ishita, Shreyas, they have correctly mentioned that the first step is to choose number of neighbors. Okay, fine. Uh, what is the second step then? First step, Ishita and Shreyas have given the correct answer. First step was to choose number of neighbors. What is the second step, guys? Anybody remembers the second step? Second step is select the closest label data points perfect ishita has given the correct answer over here and i think shreyas was also trying to say the same so these guys are saying that second step is to select the closest labeled points depending upon my number of neighbors so if i have selected three number of neighbors i will select three closest labeled data points if i have selected four number of neighbors i would choose four closest labeled data points and so on so second step was depending upon the number of neighbors Select that many closest label data points with respect to the unlabeled data point. Second step was depending upon the number of neighbors, select that many closest label data points with respect to the unlabeled data point. Fine. What is the third step then? Anandan has given the third step. Third step uh, given by Anandan and Rajiv is to make all of the selected label points to vote. Perfect. Even Shreyas has said the same. That third step is to make all of the selected label points to vote. Okay. Then what is the fourth step? Anybody remembers the fourth step? Fourth and last step. Huh. Sriya says that depending upon the number of votes, we have to give a label to my unlabeled data point. Fourth step is depending upon the number of votes. Okay. So depending on the majority of the votes, you have to assign a label to the unlabeled data point. So there are four steps in the KNN model at any point of time in your interview, in your job interview, or in your DP100 exam, they might ask you about these steps. You will say there are four steps in KNN. First step is to choose number of neighbors. Second step is depending upon the number of neighbors, you have to select that many closest labeled points with respect to the unlabeled data point. Third step is to make all of the selected closest labeled points to vote. Fourth step is based on the majority of votes. You have to assign a label to the unlabeled data point. Okay. So there are four steps to KNN. Okay. So, so the first question that they might ask with respect to KNN is what are the steps of KNN? That is the first question. Second question that they might ask is, uh, they might ask is how do you select number of neighbors? So we do that using a concept called, what is the name of the concept? It starts from the word hyper. What is the what is that full word? What is the name of that concept? How do you select uh, the number of neighbors? Because for us humans, it's very difficult. 
okay to find the correct number of neighbors because depending upon the number of neighbors you select the outcome is completely different so in order to find out correct number of neighbors we will use a technique called hyperparameter tuning perfect govind raj anil rajiv then ishita everybody have given the correct answer that in order to help me find the correct number of neighbors we'll use a technique called hyperparameter tuning oh. so these are the two major questions that can come with respect to knn model first is the steps of knn second is how do you find the best number of neighbors in knn so you will say you do that by using hyperparameter tuning okay fine so we have learned the theory of knn model now guys let's try to implement it with each of these approaches we will try to implement it with azure ml notebook okay after that we'll try to implement it with azure ml designer then we'll also implement it with azure auto ml okay so first let's start with azure ml notebook so guys just to recap about each of these approaches we know that there are three approaches to implement any machine learning model on azure first is called azure ml notebook second is called azure ml designer third is called azure auto ml so guys what is the difference between these approaches let's start with azure ml notebook in azure ml notebook what do i have to do in azure ml notebook what do i have to do so we are just trying to understand these approaches ha so shreya says in azure ml notebook we have to specify steps for machine learning and we also have to specify the code for those steps okay perfect shreyas then guys what about the second approach which is azure ml designer there what do i have to do so anil says in azure ml designer we have to specify the steps but there is no need to mention code even shreyas says the same that in azure ml designer we have to specify the steps but there is no need to mention the code okay then guys in the third approach which is azure auto ml what happens shreyas says in azure auto ml there is no need to specify the steps and also there is no need to specify the code for those steps perfect okay so we have understood the overview of each of these approaches now let's start with our first approach which is azure ml notebook okay so i will go to my azure portal guys i will go to my azure portal this is my azure portal over here okay so if you don't do not have a azure account make sure that you sign in uh, on azure platform okay uh, you will also get around uh, 100 dollars of free credit okay so make sure that you sign in uh, into the azure portal if you have not signed in already make sure that you do after that what you need to do is you need to create a machine learning resource now obviously there is there are many shortcuts available over here you can directly click on this button to uh, create that azure machine learning resource okay but if suppose that shortcut is not available then what to do that i will show to you so in that scenario what you have to do is go at the top of your uh, portal and you can see there is a search bar and here inside the search bar you have to search for machine learning okay you have to search for machine learning so anything that you want to create in azure has to be created as a resource whether you want to create a database even database has to be created as a resource if you want to create any machine learning model even that machine learning model has to be created as a resource so over here i'll create a resource for my machine learning model okay and you can see when i'm searching for that resource you can see in the marketplace section there are many resources available out of which i will select this option called azure machine learning okay this is the one that will select azure machine learning so i will open up the resource manager for azure machine learning and it will ask me for some details okay now it's important to note that any resource that we created in azure has to be in some resource group or another okay it has to be in some resource group so over here i will go ahead and create a resource group okay i'll go ahead and create a resource group uh, and uh, just to show you the advantage of a resource group just to talk about the advantage Uh, the resources that are present in the same resource group first of all uh, access to those resources is more easier second communication between the resources of the same resource group is much more easier okay so make sure that similar resources that you want to connect with each other 
are always in one resource group but even if they are in other other resource group no need to worry it's just that connecting them is slightly uh less easier okay fine anyways just as i said any resource that you create in machine learning has to be created as a has to be present in one resource group so let me create a resource group over here let me give it a name called dp100 webinar dp100 webinar i'll create this resource group i'll give it some workspace name so i want to work on this machine learning resource so i'll just give that workspace some name the name that i will give is ws dp100 okay and the rest of the details i will keep it the same okay and i'll just go ahead and create that machine learning resource over here i have gone ahead and clicked on the create button and it is now trying to create that machine learning resource so what i have said i have said two important things first is anything that we implement in machine learning has to be created as a resource whether we create a machine learning model or whether we create a database or whatever we create it has to be created as a resource and every resource in azure has to be in some of the other resource group okay and over here i just want to go ahead and create that machine learning resource so i'll click on that create button and it will now try to create that resource for me and now you can see i have got a message saying that it is now trying to create that resource for me so we'll just wait for a minute or so it will take around 60 seconds to create that resource we'll just wait for that time period okay up till now if you have any doubts you can ask me so what we have done after the tea break guys is we have learned about one machine learning model called k nearest neighbors and now we will try to see how to implement the, that machine learning model using each of the three available approaches on azure first approach is azure ml notebook second approach is azure ml designer third approach is azure auto ml okay and what i have done is i have created this machine learning resource it is still trying to create it you can see that the deployment of the resource is still in progress okay so we'll just wait for few more seconds and soon this creation of the resource should be over okay before we go ahead if you have any doubts up till now you can mention it in the chat i will help you to clear it okay uh two important points that i have specified over here first is any thing that i want to create in azure it has to be created in resource second thing that i have spoken about is every machine learning resource has to be present in some resource group okay and uh, we can have multiple resources in one resource group and the resources that are there in one resource group communication between the resource group uh, communication between the resources of one resource group is more easier access to the resources of one resource group is more easier okay but even if you have resources of uh, that are present in two different resource group it's completely fine still communication can be done with them it's just that uh, it's less easier comparatively fine anyways over here what i have done is i have created this machine learning resource so i will go to that resource over here by clicking on this button so let me go to that machine learning resource and then it will ask me an option to launch machine learning studio and that is where i will go ahead and build my machine learning model so let me go ahead and let me launch that studio over here and this is where i will go ahead and build my machine learning model and as i told you guys there are three ways in which you can do it first is azure ml notebook second is azure ml designer and third is azure auto ml okay so these are the three different approaches with which you can create your machine learning model let's start with our first approach which is azure ml notebook so i'll click on this button called start now okay and i will go ahead and i will create this azure ml notebook so let me create a file over here okay and i will give that file some name so let me give it a name called dp100 okay and i'll go ahead and create that notebook file and in that no notebook file i will go ahead and build a machine learning model okay so let's do it in that uh, notebook file i will go ahead and build a machine learning model so let's do it guys let's go ahead and do it we know that in azure ml notebook we have to specify the steps of machine learning apart from that we also have to specify the code for those steps okay we also have to specify the code for those steps so let's go ahead and do it over here by the way by the way if you want to implement any machine learning model in notebook okay 
then what are these steps? Let's go ahead and let's see those steps. So guys, first step that you have to take care of is you have to make sure that your data should not have any missing values. Okay, your data should not have any missing values. That is the first step. Second step that you have to take care of is that your data should be separated. Okay, should be separated. Or I should say the columns in your data, the columns of your data should be separated into features and target. That is the second step that you have to perform. The third step that you have to perform is that the features should be of numeric nature. Features should be of numeric nature. The fourth step that you have to take care of is that my features should be having some rows and some columns okay your features should have some rows and some columns the fifth step that you need to perform is that you need to make sure that your features should be of the type okay should be or uh, actually the type does not matter because if we are taking care of the fourth step then the type does not matter so fine I'll just go ahead and mention the fifth step correctly. So the fifth step that you have to take care of over here is that you will need to split the data into two parts. Split the data set into two parts. First is your training data set and second is your testing data set. After that, the sixth step that you have to perform over here is that you need to train the model on the training data set. Train the model on the training data set. And then the seventh step that you need to perform is that you need to test the model on the testing data set. Okay, test the model on the testing data set. Okay, now before this one step I forgot to mention over here. So let me mention that step. So let me mention that step over here. So one step that I forgot to mention in between is that you need to make sure that your features are on the same scale. Okay, your features should be on the same scale. Now, what do I mean by the term same scale? All of that I will help you to understand, so don't worry. But guys, these are the steps that you need to perform in order to implement any supervised learning model. Okay, steps for implementing any supervised learning model. Today, all of our examples will revolve around supervised learning model only because 95% of your questions in DP100 will revolve around supervised machine learning model only. So today also our goal will be to mostly talk about supervised learning models. OK, so at uh, if you want to implement supervised machine learning models in notebook, whether it is Azure ML notebook, OK, whether it is Azure ML notebook like the one that you see over here or whether it is a local notebook like Jupyter notebook. OK, or whether it is local notebook like Jupyter notebook. In any scenario. The same eight steps will apply. First step will be to make sure that your data does not have any missing values. Second step is to make sure that you uh, separate the columns in of your data into two parts, feature column and target column. Third step is to make sure that your features are of numeric nature. Fourth step is to make sure that your features should be having some rows and some columns. Fifth step is to make sure that we split the data into training and testing. Sixth step is to make sure that my features are on the same scale. Seventh step is to train the model on the training data set. Okay, train the model on the training data set. And eighth step then is to test the model on the testing data set. Eighth step over here is to test the model on the testing data set. Fine. So these are the eight steps that you have to perform in order to implement supervised machine learning model. Whether you are implementing supervised machine learning model on Azure ML notebook. OK, or you're implementing a supervised machine learning model on a local notebook like Jupyter notebook. In any scenario, same eight steps will apply. OK, in any scenario, same eight steps will apply. Up till now, guys, if there are any doubts, please let me know. Any doubts, guys, up till now? I've just mentioned these steps, nothing else. OK, now we'll try to understand those steps in detail. So don't worry. Understanding, I will show you ahead. OK, just to recap, guys, what we have learned. After the tea break, what did we do? 
first i taught you about one machine learning model called knn and now i am trying to explain to you how that knn model can be implemented using azure ml notebook using azure ml designer and also using azure auto ml okay so first we'll start with azure ml notebook so guys i want to implement knn using azure ml notebook now you tell me guys knn model is it supervised machine learning model or is it unsupervised machine learning model what type of model is knn supervised or unsupervised supervised right because we saw that in the working of knn we required presence of feature and target both that is why knn model is a supervised machine learning model okay then within supervised guys it is which type of model classification or regression have a look at the data that was used okay have a look at the data that was used in the data my target was gender so looking at the target please let me know do i have finite set of possibilities or do i have infinite set of possibilities finite set of possibilities in my target column that's why naved ishika anandan anil everybody has given the correct answer you guys have correctly said that knn is a supervised machine learning model and within supervised it is used for classification purposes even sujata says the same that knn is a supervised machine learning model and within supervised it is used for classification purposes all right perfect now now that we have seen the theory of knn we will see how to implement it on azure ml notebook how to implement it on azure ml designer and how to implement it on azure auto ml first let's start off with azure ml notebook in order to implement it on azure ml notebook in order to implement any supervised learning model on azure ml notebook we have to follow these eight steps so let's go ahead and let's follow it over here so before going ahead and implementing this supervised machine learning model i need some data so let me go ahead and let me obtain that data over here okay so we'll just go ahead and we'll try to obtain that data so let me try to load that data over here i will try to uh, upload my data file let me try to upload that data file so i'll try to upload it over here i have a data file called iris okay so this data file i will upload okay into my repository and now you can see that data file is in my repository now from that repository i will try to load it into my azure ml notebook so from this repository let me load it into my azure ml notebook okay now for doing that i will take the help of a library called pandas and using this library called pandas i will go ahead and load this data file okay over here it says that i can't run the code because i have my azure ml notebook is not connected to a compute so it's very important to create a compute over here there are two types of compute that you can create first is called compute instance and the second type of compute that you can create is called compute cluster what is the difference between the two in case of compute instance only one machine will be used whereas in case of compute cluster more than one machine will be used okay so if your job is very simple and you just want to use one machine then create a compute instance whereas if your job requires more computation and you feel that more cpus will be required more machines will be required in that scenario you can create a compute cluster you can use a compute cluster but remember that if you are using more machines more cpus the cost associated will also be more okay in my scenario i feel the computation will not be too much so i'll go ahead and create a compute instance so let me do that over here let me click on this option of creating compute and i'll create this compute instance and let me create a let me assign a name i will just say dp100 instance okay and then i can select the type of machine whether it is cpu or gpu if you want to do more computations very very extensive computations you can click on this option of gpu here i don't want to do those expensive uh, extensive comp computations so i'll click on this default option of cpu only then i can select among the options that i have i'll just choose the default option over here which is uh, which offers me two cores of machine and in that machine i have 50 or uh, 14 gb of ram and 28 gb of storage if you want to choose from different options you can choose from different options over here okay 
but i would recommend that you stick to the default option only the default option is fine with uh, fine for us i'll go ahead and create this compute instance let me go ahead and let me create it and soon that compute instance should be created right now it is being created over here you can see it is being created so we'll just wait for it to finish creating and after that we'll go ahead but up till now what we have understood after the tea break we learned about a machine learning model called knn and now we are trying to understand how to implement that machine learning model on azure ml notebook how to implement it on azure ml designer and how to implement it on azure auto ml first we are starting with azure ml notebook in order to implement any machine learning any supervised machine learning model on azure ml notebook we have to follow these eight steps before following those steps it's very important that i have some data to work with so i'm just going ahead and i'm making sure that i have some data to work with so i've already loaded that data in my repository from that repository i want to load it into azure ml notebook so i will do that for that i will have to write some code but in order to run that code i will need help of some compute okay so i've created that compute soon that compute creation should be over and after it is over we'll be able to run code on this azure ml notebook okay i'll just wait for the creation of the compute to be over it takes around uh, two minutes or so to finish so we'll just wait meanwhile if you have any doubts you can ask there are any doubts over here you can ask okay but by the time this is creating i will just revise the concepts again after uh, so let me revise from scratch so today we started off with the definition of machine learning we said that machine learning is just a set of tools which is used for two purposes either to make inferences from data or to make predictions from data then we learned that in order to make inferences and predictions from data we need the help uh, of something called machine learning model what is a machine learning model it is just a statistical representation of a real world process and uh, in order to work with any machine learning model i need some data that data needs to have some rows and some columns and the columns of your data needs to be of one of the two types either your column will be called a feature column or your column will be called a target column feature columns are those columns that help me to predict whereas target column is that column that i want to predict after that we learned about the types of machine learning models we learned about two types today first is supervised second is unsupervised what is the difference between the two in case of supervised machine learning models the data that i am using has features and target both whereas in case of unsupervised machine learning models the data that i am using only has features it does not have target after that we learned about the different types of supervised learning models we learned that there are two types first is classification second is regression in case of classification model my target has finite set of possibilities whereas in case of regression model my target column has infinite set of possibilities okay after that we learned about one machine learning model called knn and now i am trying to show to you how to implement that knn model on azure ml notebook how to implement it on azure ml designer and how to implement it on azure auto ml out of those three approaches first i will start with azure ml notebook and over here uh, uh i wanted to run some code in azure ml notebook for doing that i had to create compute and you can see my compute creation is over now okay my compute creation is over and if i want to stop that compute i can but for now i won't stop it you can see my compute creation is over and here you can see that green button okay fine then it says that my compute also has to be authenticated so i'll click on this button over here to authenticate it okay let me click on that button and it will ask me to sign in so i will sign in okay currently there is some issue with authenticating okay no issues fine we'll talk about authentication ahead i think uh, over here uh, since i have clicked on the authentication button it is trying to authenticate automatically fine we'll just wait for it uh we will just let it continue in the background till then we can go ahead and implement these steps okay authentication either will be done automatically over here or we will write some code to do it fine no issues 
and in the end authentication will be done we don't have to worry about it too much we can go ahead and implement these steps for now what i will do is the data that i have in my repository i want to load it in azure ml notebook for that i will take the help of a library called pandas inside that library i have this class called read underscore csv to this i will pass the name of the data file that i want to load the name of it is iris.csv and using it i will try to load that data and that data i will convert it to a python data type called data frame you can see over here a data frame has been created for those of you who are familiar with python you can see a data frame has been created that data frame let me go ahead and let me reference it by a variable called df okay so over here df variable references this data frame okay now i want now that i have my data i can go ahead and implement these steps first step is to make sure that my data does not have any missing values so let's go ahead and make sure that my data does not have any missing values so i'll go ahead and make sure that my data does not have any missing values okay let's check over here let's check whether my data has missing values so over here you can see that the id column has zero missing values similarly sepal length column has zero missing values similarly sepal width column has zero missing values similarly all the other columns also have zero missing values so you can see over here my data does not have any missing values so that's good news if at all it had missing values then would then we would have to deal with it in this scenario though i do not have any missing values so that's fine fine second step is to make sure that the columns of the data should be separated into features and target so let's do it let's make sure that the columns of my data are separated into feature and target okay so what i will do is over here looking at the data what i feel is i want to predict species of the iris flower this entire data is about iris so basically what has happened is the scientists in the laboratory have recorded details of 150 iris flowers some flowers belong to the species of setosa some flowers belong to the species of virginica while some flowers belong to the species of versicolor okay so there are three species of iris flower and scientists have recorded details of all those uh 150 iris flowers okay some of them were setosa species some of them were virginica species some of them were versicolor species apart from recording these species they have also recorded the sepal length sepal width petal length petal width and so on okay so i have recorded details so the scientists have recorded details of iris flowers now over here there are many many columns out of which suppose i want to predict on the species column so if i want to predict on species column then guys species column will be called which type of column feature column or target column if i want to predict on species then species will be called which type of column guys does anybody know the answer if i want to predict on species column then species will be called my target column ishita and karan have given the correct answer you guys have correctly said that if i want to predict on species then species will be my target column perfect so here yeah, let me fetch my target column and let me reference it by a variable y okay so i have got my target column separately here you can see i have got my target column separately then all the other columns apart from target will be my potential feature columns okay so from this data frame apart from this target column called species apart from this target column called species all the other columns will be my potential feature columns okay and have a look at your potential feature columns guys i have five potential feature columns any column over here is there any column that you feel is not worthy of becoming a feature column is there any column that you feel won't help me to predict the target is there any column that you feel won't help me to predict species of flower any column that you feel won't help me to predict species of flower yes kanan says id column id column will not help me to predict species of flower so i will go ahead and i will drop it okay i will go ahead and i will drop it let me go ahead and let me drop it fine and now you will see that id column will be dropped and previously i had five potential feature columns out of which one column has been dropped so i will be left with only four now one second over oh, yeah, here there is a spelling mistake the column that i wanted to drop starts with upper case i 
so let me make that change in my code okay and now you can see previously i had five potential feature columns now i will only have four potential feature columns because one has been removed out of these four potential feature columns is there any column that you feel is not worthy of becoming a feature no i don't think so so i will keep everything over here okay i don't think so that there is any column that is not worthy of becoming a feature so i will just keep all these feature columns okay i will keep all these potential feature columns over here i will not remove any fine so over here my second step was to separate my feature and target columns and i have done that third step is to make sure that my feature columns are of numeric nature okay so let's check if my feature columns are of numeric nature and just by looking at the values of the feature columns guys you can see that all the values of the feature columns are numeric okay you can even cross check it with code you can check the data types of your feature columns and you can see first column is of in the first column i have values of type float float is a numeric data type if you are aware with python you would know that float is a numeric data type similarly sepal width is also of the type float it is also numeric data type petal length is also of the type float float is a numeric data type petal width is also of the type float it is also a numeric data type so values in all my feature columns are numeric so i don't have to worry okay so third step is done then fourth step fourth step is to make sure that my features do have some rows and some columns so let's make sure that that happens let's check whether my features have some rows and some columns or not okay we'll check if my features have some rows and some columns or not so let's check and over here you can see in your features you have 150 rows and four columns okay in total you have 150 rows and you have four columns so you do have some rows and some columns so you don't have to worry okay so fine my fourth rule is also satisfied my fourth step is also done then fifth step is to split the data set into two parts training and testing so let's go ahead and do that let's split the data into two parts training and testing so we'll go ahead split our data set into two parts training and testing in order to do that i will need help of a function which i will import from this sklearn library so from this sklearn library which is nothing but a folder basically so from the sklearn folder there is a file called model selection from this file i have a function called train test split and this is the function that will help me to perform this fifth step so let me go ahead and let me import this function over here i have a error what is that error okay it says there is no module called scikit-learn fine so we'll try to get it it seems that this uh, library is not installed no issues so we'll try to install it okay so using pip we'll try to first install the library and once it is installed i can go ahead and i can use it let me try to install the library first okay you can see that library is installing after it is installed i can go ahead and use the code inside of it okay one second over here i have a error it says from why does it say module not found i have written the correct code the code is fine i even have downloaded the sql on library okay maybe i might have to restart my computer or i might have to restart my notebook just for this installation to reflect ha huh, it says that you may need to restart the kernel to use updated packages fine so we have imported this package we have imported this live we have sorry installed this package or we have installed this library called scikit learn in order to use it i might have to restart so let me go ahead and let me restart my kernel okay so the entire kernel i'll just go ahead and i will restart fine so let me do one thing i click on this option called restart kernel okay and we'll just wait for that restart to be over and once it is over we can go ahead ha huh. okay now my restart is over so now let me run the code again from scratch i will uh, run it from the beginning i'll go ahead run the code from the beginning and now we should not have any problems okay now we should not have any problems we can go ahead and implement these steps without any issues 
So over here, we'll just go ahead, implement these steps without any issues whatsoever. If at all there is an issue with regards to my scikit-learn library again, then I might have to restart the entire notebook. Fine, we'll see how it goes. Ah, still there is an issue with scikit-learn. Fine, no worries. Uh, what I would do is I will have to restart the entire compute then. Fine. Uh, let me restart it entirely. Okay. Currently, it seems there is an issue. Or maybe I can do one more thing over here. Let me do one more thing, guys. I will go to the studio. In the studio, I will go ahead and click on notebooks. And I'll click on terminal. And let me write the code for installation in the terminal. Okay, so the same code that I had written in my notebook, same code I'll write in the terminal. Pip install scikit-learn. Let's see whether that helps us. If that does not help, I will have to restart it again. Here, what error do I get? Let me just check. It said exit status one. Okay. Why does it do that? The code is fine. It says the previous advice. Okay, fine. Exit status. Uh, fine. It's fine. This is the warning, not an error. This one, which says that I have to use the entire term scikit learn, but fine. Even if I don't do that, at least currently it should work because in the future versions I might have to do it, but in the current version there is no need to do that. Okay. Apart from that, can I get any? Other detail mentioned over here. Let me just check. Is there any other detail mentioned? Uh, I don't think so, right? Okay, fine. Let me try with the entire name, scikit-learn. Let's see. If that does not help, no issues. We'll restart the entire Jupyter notebook again, and then we'll see how it works. In my scenario, it says, scikit learn already there okay so it says already installed scikit learn library fine but even after i installed it what happened over here is that it is not reflecting because i'm not able to use the code inside of it and if i'm not able to use the code inside of it i will have to first restart the entire kernel and once i restart the entire kernel i will have to just for safety restart my entire compute okay let's do that for now i will just save the contents in the file let me press Control s let me just save okay and now that it is saved over here what i will do is i'll go ahead and close this file and the entire compute that I had created. Let me just go ahead and refresh it again. So I had created this compute instance. Let me go ahead and let me restart it again. Okay, I will restart it again. And hopefully now that library that we had installed, right, it should reflect. Apart from that, our code is right. There is no issues with our code whatsoever. Sometimes it happens that the new library that we are installing it does not reflect directly we have to sometimes restart our kernels if that does not help we have to restart our compute altogether okay fine so we'll just wait for this to be over and after restarting our compute let's see because our code is absolutely fine there is no issue with our code okay we'll just wait for this to be over and after that, we'll go ahead. Let's wait for it. Restarting could take around two to three minutes. Till then, I will just open up the chat. If you have any doubts, you can ask me in the chat. One second. Ha. Huh. Nam Ram Rumali says how to register uh, a model using Azure ML Studio. Okay. Now, why registering is required? Registering is required that after I make the model. If I want to 
use the model. Okay, so if I want to use the model, I might have to deploy it. Now for deployment, I will have to register my model. Okay, now how to register it? I will show you. Okay, in the in today's session only, we'll see how to do it. So I will show you the hands-on of it. So don't worry. Okay, Ram Murari says we can take a lunch break. Uh, but I think this restart should not take too much of time. Let's wait two to three minutes. If still there is some issue, right? I will have to uh, maybe close. But I think closing or deleting the compute would not help. Okay, I will have to check why this library is not reflecting okay, because our code is absolutely fine. There is no issues with our code. It is just that the library that we installed is not reflecting. Fine, we'll see. Is there any issue with the compute? We'll have to check. Okay. Uh, let's wait for a minute. If that does not, if it still does not get restarted in a minute, fine, we'll take a lunch break then. Okay, so we'll not have to wait then. Let's wait for one minute. Let's wait up till 12.37. Okay, if we still do not get it restarted, then we'll take a lunch break, no issues. But I don't think it should take that much long. If it takes that much long, no issues, we'll take a lunch break. Okay, but till this is restarting, we'll just do a quick revision of what we have done. So after the tea break, we learned about a model called KNN. Okay, and with respect to KNN model, guys, two questions can be asked in your certification exam. First question will be related to your steps. Okay, so there were four steps, so they can ask you anything about those steps. Second question is they might ask you that out of those four steps, first step was to choose the number of neighbors. So how do you correctly choose the number of neighbors? So you will say we do that by using a technique called hyperparameter tuning. Okay, so we learned about that model called KNN, and after that we tried to see how that model can be implemented using the three approaches on Azure Cloud. So how to implement that model on Azure ML Notebook, how to implement it on Azure ML Designer, and similarly, how to implement it on Azure Auto ML. Okay, we are starting with Azure ML Notebook. Okay, and over here, we have a notebook file created. In that notebook file, previously I had an issue, and the issue was that the library that I had installed was not reflecting. Okay. So let's see now whether it reflects. If it does not reflect, no issues. We'll create a new compute. Okay. Because our code is absolutely fine. The only issue is that derivably is not reflecting. Maybe there is some issue with my kernel or my compute. We'll see. Okay. Let me run the code from start. Here is the code from start. Here we go. Okay, and we are just implementing the code. Okay, and let's see whether now the code works. If it does not, we'll have to see what is the issue with my kernel or my compute. Yes, still the same issue. Okay, there is no issue in my code whatsoever. In my code, there is no issues. It is not at all. Uh, accepting this library called scikit-learn. Okay, fine. Let me just check then. Uh, if I still try to install it, what what does it show to me? If I try to install it, what does it show? Fine. It says requirement already satisfied. Previously, when we installed it, it installed it for us. And now after I run the code for installing, it says that I've already installed. Fine, so I've already installed, but it says that. But still, I am not able to use it. OK, it says I will have to restart the kernel. It tried to restart the kernel, but still it does did not work. OK, what else? What else can we do? I can create a new compute then. OK, that is the only. Uh, thing that I can think of. OK, because over here there are no issues whatsoever. I already have my scikit-learn library installed. It should get reflected. 
if it is not reflecting there is a issue with my kernel but we restarted the kernel if that does not help maybe there is some issue with the compute so let me do one thing guys i will go ahead and create a new compute altogether okay let me go ahead and let me create a new compute okay and i'll just stop this compute that i'm using let me go ahead and let me create an entirely new compute because there is no issue in our code okay the issue is that i installed a new library that library is not reflecting fine so we'll try it. so there, there there are only two issues either with our kernel that means the file that you're working in or the compute on which that kernel is running only two issues are possible apart from that there are no other issue whatsoever okay we'll just wait for this to stop and i guess even stopping will take time fine so no issues what we'll do is we'll take a lunch break after the lunch break okay meanwhile within the lunch break i'll create a new compute okay and that should help me to solve this issue over here that we are facing but apart from that there is no issue in our code so that's a good thing we'll try to see what issue we are facing in my compute over here fine but up to, apart from that guys up till here is it making sense ha huh, even though it is not authenticated still it should work uh, authentication uh, over here should not uh, stop us from installing a library okay it should still work so even without authentic authentication there is that should not be a problem but fine we'll see maybe there is some issue in the compute we'll try to resolve it but up till here guys is it making sense up till here whatever we have discussed made sense guys any doubts up till now meanwhile in the lunch break i'll create a new compute i'll see okay why that library is not reflecting up till here understood any doubts guys any doubt whatsoever clear okay fine so we'll take a lunch break guys of 1 hour okay so let's take a lunch break up till 1:45 pm okay and after that we'll be back and we will continue our ml journey and we will also see what issue we were facing in the library okay there are only two issues that uh, because of which we are getting error either kernel issue or compute issue fine kernel issue i don't think we have a kernel issue there is only compute issue so i'm just stopping the compute for now i'll just create our entirely new compute again and let's see if that helps fine so till then let's take a lunch break after your lunch break we'll be back and we'll continue our ml journey okay so let's take a lunch break up till 1:45 pm okay and after that we'll be back okay till then i'll be on mute if you have any doubts you can ask me on chat okay till then i'll just be on mute
Welcome back to the session, guys. Hope all of you guys are back after the lunch break. So let's resume. Before resuming, we will do a quick revision of the concepts that we have learned up till now. So let's do that. So guys, first we started off by learning about machine learning. So we said that machine learning is just a set of tools which is used for two purposes. First purpose is to get inferences from the data. Second purpose is to get predictions from the data. And how does it do that? How does it get inferences and predictions from data? It does that by using something called a machine learning model. What is a machine learning model? It is just a statistical representation of a real world process. Now, when I say it is a statistical representation of a real world process, what do I actually mean? It is the is that using machine learning model, we are just simulating a real world process using some statistics or some mathematics. Now we know that in order to make any machine learning model work, we need some data and that data needs to have some rows and some columns. Also, the columns in your data will need to be of one of the two types. Either your column will be a feature column or your column will be a target column. Feature columns are those columns that help me to predict. Target column is that column that I want to predict. After that, we learned that there are two main types of machine learning models, supervised machine learning model and unsupervised machine learning model. What is the difference between the two? Well, in supervised machine learning model, the data that I'm using has features and target both. Whereas in unsupervised machine learning model, the data that I'm using only has features, but it does not have target. Then we learned that in supervised machine learning models, we have further two types. First type is called classification model and second type is called regression model. What is the difference between the two types? Well, in classification model, the target column has finite set of possibilities, whereas in regression model, the target column has infinite set of possibilities. After that, we learned about our first machine learning model. Guys, what was the name of that first machine learning model? Anybody remembers the name of our first machine learning model? What was the name? Anybody in the chat remembers the name? Yes, Ishita remembers the name. Ishita says that the name of our first machine learning model was KNN and KNN stands for K nearest neighbors. Now with respect to KNN, there are two questions that can be asked to you. First question is with regards to the steps of KNN. So we know that there are four steps of KNN and they might ask you about those steps. Second question that they might ask you is, we know that the first step in KNN is to choose the number of neighbors. So how do you correctly choose the number of neighbors? We do that using a technique. Anybody remembers the name of the technique? I repeat the second question. So in the second question, they might ask you a detail about the first step of KNN. We know that the first step of KNN is to choose number of neighbors. But how do we correctly choose number of neighbors? We do that by using a technique. Ishita remembers the technique. Ishita says the name of the technique is hyperparameter tuning. Okay, fine. And after that, guys, we tried to see how we can implement KNN model using three approaches on Azure. First approach was Azure ML Notebook. Second approach was Azure ML Designer. And third approach was Azure Auto ML. So let's start with the first approach, Azure ML Notebook. So when we were trying to work with the first approach, we had some issues, right? What was the issue? The issue was that the library that we had installed, we were not able to use it because that library was not reflecting in my notebook. So what I did was I stopped the compute that I had created. I stopped the compute instance that I created and then I started it again. And what happened was the issue that I was facing previously is now resolved. So now if I try to just go ahead and use the library, I will be able to use it. Let me show to you. Let me run the code from start. So I will run the code from start over here. And you will see that the issue that I was facing previously will now be resolved. Okay. I just went ahead and stopped the compute instance and started it again. Okay. So that the installation that we have done gets reflected in the file that we are working in. Okay. And you will see now the issue that we are facing previously will now be resolved. OK, so you can see this code was not working previously. This code was creating an issue. OK, but now you can see that the code works without any errors. 
Okay, previously this code was creating an issue. Now it works without any errors. Fine. So what I have done over here is from the sklearn folder, there is a file called model selection. From that file, I have imported a Python function called train test split. Now that I have imported it, I can go ahead and use it. So let me use it. And in order to use it, I will have to call that function called train test split. While calling, I will pass some values to the parameters. So first I will pass my feature columns, which are referenced by variable X. If you go above, you can see my feature columns have been referenced by variable X. So I will first pass my feature columns, which are referenced by variable X. After that, I will pass my target column, which is referenced by variable Y. If you go above, you will be able to observe that my target column is referenced by variable Y. Here you can see it. Okay. After doing that, I need to use a parameter called test size. And here I have to specify how much percentage of my data should go into testing. Okay. So suppose if I say that 20% of data should go into testing. So for that, I will have to specify a value 0 0.2, which signifies that 20% of the overall data will go into testing and the remaining 80% will go into training. Okay. Test size equal to 0 0.2 means 20% of the overall data will go into testing and the remaining 80% will go into training. Okay, fine. Now, after that, once I go ahead and uh, run this code, what will happen is I will get four values. First, I will get the training features, which I will reference by variable X train. After that, I will get the features of my testing data set, which I'll reference by variable X test. After that, I will get the target in my training data set, which I'll reference by the variable Y train. And then the fourth and last thing that I will get is the target of my testing data set, which I'll reference by the variable Y test. Okay. So first I will get the features of my training data set, then the features of my testing data set. After that, target of my training data set and target of my testing data set. Okay, I'll just go ahead and run the code and you can see that splitting works. With that, my fifth step has been successfully done. Now, let's go ahead and let's perform my sixth step. Sixth step is to check whether the features are on the same scale. So let's go ahead and check whether my features are on the same scale or not. So we'll just go ahead and check that. We'll just see whether the features are on the same scale. Now, what do I mean by the statement that features should be on the same scale? Let's try to understand it with an example. So in this example, guys, suppose I'm recording heights of third standard students. OK, and I'm also recording heights of 10 standard students. So let's suppose I'm recording heights of third standard students and 10 standard students. Now, uh, I recorded height of first student in 10th standard, then second student in 10th, uh, sorry, I recorded height of first student in third standard, second student in third standard, third student in third standard, and so on. Likewise, all the students that were there in the third standard, I recorded their heights. I found out that the average height, average height of third standard student is somewhere like 3.3 feet, okay? And similarly, I recorded the heights of all the 10 standard students in my school. And I found out the average height of all the 10 standard students in my school was something like 5.5 feet. Now I will ask you a question. The question is, are the third standard students and are the 10 standard students on the same level in terms of their height? Are the third standard students and the 10 standard students on the same level in terms of their height. What do you feel? No, yes, any answer? No, right? And you guys are right. Ishita mentions over here that the third standard students and the 10 standard students are not on the same level in terms of their height. Even Rajiv says the same, that the third standard students and the 10 standard students are not on the same level. Okay, that means you are saying they are not on the same scale. Okay, not on the same level or not on the same scale in terms of their height. And how did we find that out? We looked at the average value, okay? So we compared the two average values. We found that the difference between the average value was too much. 
that's why we said that they were not on the same level or they were not on the same scale okay and how uh, again to repeat how did we find whether they are not on the same scale we looked at their average values similarly guys in order to check whether my features are on the same scale i have to look at the average value of my features so let's check the average value of my feature average is also known as mean okay in statistics another word for average is mean so let's look at the mean value of features or let's look at the average value of features and we find out that uh, for my first feature column the average was 5.84 cm for my second feature column the values had an average of 3.05 cm and so on so guys between 5.84 cm and 1.1 cm is that too much of a difference 5.84 cm 1.1 cm is that too much of a difference ha huh. now raji rajiv mentions over here a very important point okay and we'll come to that point just in 30 seconds but rajiv just to answer this question is there too much of a difference between 5.84 and 1.19 5.84 cm 1.19 yeah okay and can i say this difference depends upon your perception right you might feel that it is too much of a difference some other student might feel that no this difference is not too much so can i say that this difference that we are trying to calculate in order to check whether they are on the same scale or not that depends upon your human perception and our human perception could be wrong right for example rajiv might feel that they are they uh, that there is a too much of difference between the average values and that is why he might conclude that the features are not on the same scale on the other hand someone like let's say govind raj might say that no this difference between 5.84 cm and 1.1 cm is not too much and he might feel that this difference is not too much so the feature columns are on the same scale so this conclusion that we are trying to draw is based on human perception is there a way in which we can avoid this human perception yes and we can do it with the help of a technique called hypothesis testing using which technique guys hypothesis testing okay using a technique called hypothesis testing okay here there will be no human perception okay here you will rely on some technique called hypothesis testing and using hypothesis testing we will see whether the difference between the feature column whether the average difference between the feature column is too much or whether it is very low okay whether it is very high or whether it is very low if it is very high we will conclude that no they are not on the same scale if it is very low we will conclude that okay the feature columns are on the same scale okay for now i know that if i perform hypothesis testing on my feature columns i will get a conclusion that there is not too much of difference between 5.84 cm and 1.19 cm so i will get a conclusion that okay there is not too much difference between the average values so i will conclude that the feature columns are on the same scale okay but uh, in this uh, class i won't be able to explain you hypothesis testing because that concept alone will take 3 to 4 hours okay but remember that in the uh, mcq if at all a question comes how do you check the average uh, how do you uh, like compare the average value of the feature column to check whether they are on the same scale or not we will use a technique and what is